Um, so how about titanium one plus? Let's try writing the electron configuration for that. So <coughs> I don't think that's real species. So let's try this. Titanium three plus. Sorry about that. <laughs> So we want to write the electron configuration for titanium 3 plus. How many valence electrons does titanium have? Four. Right. And how many are we taking away? Oh. Is there a problem with that? What's the, yeah. what's the confusion? So we have to dip back into the because of Earth, or like because S, like home planets, because we don't really have. I mean, if you're going back, I mean, if you're subtracting three electrons, that brings you back into the S. Uh, let's see. Well, there's two ways to do this. Maybe, uh, maybe the, um, the way I first described this maybe is a little bit confusing. Maybe it would be better to look at it this way. This is equivalent to what I said here. If you're making a cation, these are the energy levels of the various blocks. Valence F would be lowest in energy, then D, then S, and P would be highest in energy. This is really equivalent to what I said before, but maybe this, this is a more straightforward way to put it. Now, um, how many valence electrons does neutral titanium have? Right, neutral titanium has four valence electrons. How do we know? Because it's in the fourth column from the left. All right, now, so how many valence electrons does titanium 3 plus have? Yeah, one valence electron left. And the question is, where should we put it? Well, we should put it in the lowest possible energy orbitals. And again, because this is a cation, we can't use the periodic table to tell us what the lowest energy is. The periodic table only works for neutral species. Instead, we've had to learn a new order. And again, here's maybe the best way to put this new order. So what's going to be the lowest energy for titanium? Well, if possible, it would put it in the F block. Um, but this row doesn't have an F block. So we're not going to be able to put the electrons in the F block. Um, next best is to put it in the D block. Well, is there a D block available? Yes. Yeah, in this row, we do have the D block. We're using the 3D block. And how many electrons will we put there? So this would be the answer to that question. This would be the electron configuration for titanium. Um, if we had surplus electrons and the D got, block got filled, we would start trying to put them in maybe the S and the P. But that's not really likely to happen, because it would take 10 electrons to fill up the D block. So then it would just be argon 3D1. Yes. Um, oh, yeah, so I forgot the core electrons. Good point. So the full electron configuration would be argon 3D1. So don't pay attention to this. Yes, although, well, we did use this to see there was no F block, of course, and we did use this to see that we were using the 3D block. But what we're not paying attention to is the periodic table says that 4S is preferred to 3D. That is, this fills up first, but that's only for neutral species. The periodic table only tells you the alpha principle for neutral species. For ions, or at least for cations, we have to learn this new rule, which I've got on the board here. Uh, now, maybe this is a better way than I put this before, but you could have used the approach I used before. Neutral titanium would have been AR for, well, what would be the, the, the configuration for neutral titanium? AR. Uh, 
chorus two, three, two, three, two. Since it's neutral, we would fill up the S block first, and then we would start filling up the D blocks. And now I have to take away three electrons from this. Well, first I would take them away from the highest energy level. And in a cation, the highest energy level is going to be the S. So first I would take the electrons from the S, which would leave zero in the S. But then I have to take one more electron away. Well, the next place, only place I can take electron away from now is the D. So I could take this electron from the D, and again that would give me three D1. So that would be the, the that would be the method of starting with the neutral and then taking them away. Uh, that's the way I described you at first, but actually maybe this is more straightforward and less confusing, and this matches what the book did better. The, what the, this matches the explanation in the book. The point in the book that books makes is just the, the energy levels for the um, valence orbitals for cations are just different than for neutral species, and this is the new order. So you don't have to start with a neutral species. Maybe that just confused us. What you do need to start with doing is um, count how many valence electrons the neutral species has. Then you can figure out how many valence electrons the cation has. And then you can just start putting them in, um, into the right places. OK. Uh, all right, so here's two possible approaches. Um, so I think you said you guys had a, a hard example of this. Uh, did you want to take a look at one of those hard examples? If this is making sense so far? Yeah. OK. What is the electron configuration for the transition metal ion in the following compound, C? Number C? OK. Uh, so we want to find the electron configuration for the transition metal ion in this compound. All right, so, we'll have, so there are some extra skills here that we haven't talked about yet. Um, first of all, let's try, uh, so we're going to need to know, so in all the previous cases, I told you what the oxidation number was. For example, I said at first we were doing, what did we do, titanium 3 plus? Yeah, we did titanium 3 plus, for example, or manganese 2 plus. Well, those are the oxidation numbers that I were giving you. Oxidation number is basically a way of measuring charge, so we need to measure the charge. But in this example, we weren't given the charge. Now, which, which of these are we looking at here? Which of these elements is the question about? Yeah. The tantalum. So we need to focus on the tantalum. We need to figure out what its oxidation number is, because that wasn't given to us. Do you know how to do that? I think so. How would we do that? Okay, well, we look at the, um, the anion that it's attached to there, that mm -hmm. fluoride. So we know it's negative one, so it's negative seven holes of fluoride. Right. And then your sodium is, um, well, each one has a plus one, so overall it's going to be a plus two. So the overall molecule is neutral, so we need to neutralize it. So therefore, your, um, like what is it, tan tan tantalum, that's right. Tan tantalum is going to have to be a plus five. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly right. That's the exact right way to work that out. That might be something you have to do a bunch of times in the homework to work through those charges. Very good. By the way, this is the notation I like for doing these types of problems. You have to distinguish between the charge on individual species and the total charge on all of the species. So I find it helpful to put the individual charges down below and the total charges up above. If I try to do some of these steps in my head, I tend to make mistakes. So it's better to write all the numbers down. But I don't want to confuse the total numbers with the individual numbers. Each individual fluorine is a fluoride is a negative one charge. The seven fluorides together is the negative seven. How did you know that? Well, just because this is in the next to last column, we know this tends to gain one electron. Um, and because this is in the first column, it tends to lose one electron. So from the periodic table, we can figure out what these charges would be. But we can't use the periodic table to find the charge on transition metals. That technique I was just talking about of looking at the columns only works for the S and the P block. Instead, we have to figure this out by working out the other numbers for the transition metals. All right, so this is tantalum five plus.